Hello, this is Dr. Carlo Oger, board certified emergency physician with EDXIT Video. In this edition of EDXIT Video Pro, I'm going to answer uh, a mystery video I had posted maybe two weeks ago about a patient presented with a nasal mask causing obstruction of his left nair. As you can see on the table on the left, there are many different causes of acquired lesions to the nasal septum. It is impossible to go through them all. So in this video, we're going to discuss just a few of them and how it applies to our patient. This is the actual pictures of the patient that we had. Nasal septal lesions are relatively common. Although most manifest with symptoms of nasal obstruction, like our patient, some are incidentally found. If a physical examination confirms the presence of a mass, both MR imaging, magnetic resonance image, and CT it's computed tomography may be used to characterize the finding, but because their imaging features often are non-specific, the diagnosis is usually going to be based on the clinical history and histopathologic findings. That means you got to get a good history and you need to get a biopsy or a sample of the lesion. CT scans and MRIs, although help, they're not going to be diagnostic. The most common symptoms produced by septal lesions are nasal obstruction like this patient nasal discharge, like the picture on the left, which are easily attributed to rhinosinusitis, complications of sinusitis, common allergies, and things like that, nosebleeds, facial swelling, and pain. Acquired nasal septal abnormalities may be caused by trauma, infection, toxicity, inflammation, or even tumors. Let's talk about some of them. Trauma from rhinotilexomania. <laughs> Let's say that again. Rhinotilexomania. You know, that could pretty much be the answer to any question. Hey, how come you're so blue today? I got a case of rhinotilexomania, that's why. In other words, I'm a chronic nose picker. Chronic self-mutilation with resulting loss of body parts occurs most often in schizophrenic and severely obsessive compulsive patients. Septal abscess, another cause of septal masses, collection of pus under the perichondrium or periosteum of the nasal septum. The etiology, secondary infection from septal hematoma, so if you get hit on the nose and you create a hematoma or blood in the septum, you can get secondarily infected. It can come from a furuncle of the nose or upper lip. Furuncles are usually infections related to hair follicles and acute infections such as typhoid fever or measles, etc. Most adult patients with nasal septal abscess have a history of accidental or iatrogenic trauma, like putting things into the nose, or a suppressed immune system like people with HIV or AIDS. Spontaneous septal abscess are rare but may be caused by acute ethmoiditis, sphenoiditis, or dental infection. Nasal septal abscess are more common in males. Staph aureus is the most common organism cultured but also strep pneumonia, streptococcus mullerii, streptococcus viridiums, and many others can be cultured if the material can be extracted. As the picture of the left, you can just put a needle in it and drain it. But you would only do this if you knew it was an abscess for sure. If you do this into a solid lesion, you can aggravate it, make it bigger, make it bleed a lot. So you wouldn't do this unless you were sure of the diagnosis. Tumors. Clinical manifestations include chronic sinusitis that is unresponsive to antibiotic treatment and recurrent nasal symptoms. The most common primary malignant tumor of the nose is squamous cell carcinoma. Nasal polyps, they are overgrowth of the mucosa that frequently accompany allergic rhinitis and are freely movable and non-tender. Here's another picture of a nasal polyp and different places where they can happen. In our particular case, we don't know the final diagnosis. Patient was referred to an ENT specialist. And after follow-up with the ENT specialist, he never went to follow up. So we'll never know what he had. But we know a couple things. The mask came um, in the last week or two weeks of presentation. It was non-painful, and it was associated with congestion and nasal blockage. So most likely it was a simple polyp related to maybe sinusitis or something like that. He was given topical antihistamines and antibiotics and sent to the ENT, which he didn't follow up. On follow-up, he would have had a biopsy or a lesion 
uh, a sample deletion obtained to be cultured, to be sent to histopathology and find a definitive diagnosis. So I'm sorry I don't have a final answer for you, but all these went through the exercise, the mental exercise to try to figure out what it is, what different options are, and we let some pretty cool terms. So I hope you learned this video. See you next time. Bye-bye.